We are the roving people, the tinkers and traders and tellers of fortunes. We are the dancers in the night and the music in the wilderness. We are the untamed ones who live only by our own rules. We own no land, and no land owns us. The world is ours for the travel. You may call me Magda. That is the name I go by with you Gorgios. Gorgio is the word we call anyone who is not a gypsy. We gypsies are not werewolves. We are shapeshifters. We take on the form of wolves for hunting. You can call me Davy. Names are very important. Davy is my name to outsiders. I also have a gypsy name and a true name. True names are not given lightly. Gypsies never ask others for their names. Never say your true name. Never speak the true name of another. To say another's true name aloud gives you power over him, if you are indeed more powerful. Otherwise, it gives him power over you. We are roving traders. Our home is our wagon and campfire. We would have left this valley long ago if the flooding had not washed away the road and filled the mountain pass with swamp. The road from the town used to lead to the pass to the southwest. That was the only way in and out of this valley. This swamp is an ill place, and we gypsies stay far from it. I was borrowing some corn from the cornstalks outside the town when the Burgomeister and some townsmen came from the gate. I moved behind the cornstalks to stay out of their way. They looked to be heading to the graveyard. Then, one of them pointed at me and shouted, and suddenly, they all grabbed me. I had no chance to run. I had no idea what was going on. I knew gypsies were disliked in the village, but I did not know we were so feared. Now, you listen to the words of an old gypsy fortune teller. You will initiate this reading of the cards. The shuffling and cutting attunes the cards to those vibrations which surround you. You do not control the cards, nor do I. It is the cards which show what they choose to show. I will reveal to you the meanings of the cards. It is up to you to interpret how they affect you. You may reveal the first card. The first card is the significator. It is the symbol of the subject of the reading. This is the Knight of Swords. This card represents a person who is courageous and skilled. This is one who holds the ideal of chivalry and goodness. One who is willing to face death gladly, to uphold what he knows is right and true. This card clearly represents you, and therefore this reading is about you. The cards which surround the significator represent the influences which affect your current situation. This next card represents something from the distant past which is relevant to the here and now. Turn over this card and reveal the influence of your past.
this card is the High Priestess. It is inverted, which means the meanings too are turned upside down. The High Priestess is some woman of your past. She is a person of selfishness and passion. Someone who seems to be very powerful, but her knowledge is limited by her own conceit. Turn over the next card to reveal more of this individual. The Four of Coins. Now that is the card of the miser. This woman of your past has power, but uses it selfishly. This is a person who cares only of her own needs and wants, and does not care what she does or how she influences others. This person is one who, as long as you satisfy her needs and vanity, will be willing to aid you, providing it does not require any amount of effort on her part. However, if you act against her, her vengeance will be swift and violent. This is not a person to disregard, and she plays an important part in the events around you. Reveal the next card. Something of the more recent past, which has consequences in the present. This is the inverted King of Coins. This is an old and vicious man, someone who is willing to use any means to attain his desires. Someone who is dangerous and cannot be trusted or underestimated. Reveal the next card that we may learn more of this person. The devil. This is indeed an ill omen. This person is influenced by black magic, a man of power and dark desires. Yet the devil is a sign of bondage and subservience, and this person has faced unexpected failure of some sort. This is someone of great evil, someone who cannot be trusted. This is one who will bear you ill will, yet is somehow prevented from harming you or gaining his revenge for now. Should he gain his freedom, this man will seek to destroy all which stands between his goals and himself. Turn over the next card to reveal a surrounding influence. Ah, the Queen of Cups. Again, there is a female influencing your present. This is a woman of wisdom and love. She is kind, generous, and virtuous. Let us see what next the cards reveal of this person. The Star. It is a symbol of hope and spiritual influence. Now this is a woman in touch with her magical nature. She is gentle and loving, yet there is great strength within. This is a woman who generates hope and help through her actions. The next card reveals the overriding influence upon the future. Ah, the Queen of Swords. She is a woman of wit and skill, yet she has suffered through terrible hardship, and she is marked by her suffering. Oh, she faces her sorrows bravely, but with a deep, deep loneliness. The next card will tell us more about her. The moon. It is the card of deception. This woman is a deceiver, or is deceived by her own beliefs. This card also reveals the magical nature of the woman. This is the strength which sustains her. 
Oh, she is either surrounded by false friends or seeks to betray you herself. She is the victim or the villainess. The final card will reveal the influence which will most affect you. The Void. Mm. About this card, I will not speak. I must meditate upon its meaning. This tableau shows the influences surrounding you. These people will affect your life for weal or for woe. It is up to you to determine how and what effect they will have upon you. That is all that the cards and I can reveal at this time. <laughs>